On the menu today, we have an epic online 4 vs 4 custom scenario multiplayer battle as the forces of Burgundy and Lorraine clash for this settlement. But not only that, there are two reinforcement armies as Lorraine have bought a army from the Swiss, a mercenary force to come in and aid them in this battle. However, will these guys be able to break through the defenses of Burgundy or the siege line of Burgundy, I should say, and get their way and make their way into the city itself to relieve the defenders? Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome to another custom scenario battle for 12-12. We are back and this one is going to be very, very exciting because we have over 20,000 soldiers ready to fight and die for your entertainment. Not only that, though, we are also taking a look at the new forces for Lorraine. These units have been recently added to the game to go ahead and spice up this faction and I think they look absolutely spectacular. I love the shields on these dudes. They're just really, really cool. As well as that, Lorraine does have a few contingents of Swiss mercenaries in their factions. You can see that we do have a unit of Swiss pikemen right here, uh, kind of embedded in the sergeant unit. But that's just how good the Swiss actually are, that they can do something like that without killing their friendly units. We also have, I think, some really cool Pavese Lorraine units right here. Yeah, we do indeed. So that's very, very cool. But yeah, the overall kind of scenario for this battle is that we have two Burgundy armies kind of going to be assaulting the walls as Lorraine try and push them back. And then the reinforcement armies, which are now on the move, are going to try and relieve the defenses in the city by breaking through these two Burgundy armies. So not only are we going to have to keep an eye on the, uh, on the walls themselves, we're also going to have to keep a good eye on this battle going on outside as it does seem like the Swiss are already moving quickly to reinforce and they're obviously going to have another army of Lorraine up their left hand side so plenty of very cool units and I love these copper shields for the Swiss they just feel so unique and different and like, it's just very very strange compared to a lot of the other units they just look really really cool and make the Swiss very exciting. But already you can see a big push out here. Burgundy are looking to go ahead and get their medium heavy cavalry into battle. However, the Swiss nobles are going to be pulling back. I would have thought that this would have been a great engagement for them. Because as you can see, they're a lot heavily armored compared to these dudes. Maybe they're just waiting for more reinforcements to arrive so they don't get completely overwhelmed. The city is obviously being bombarded right now by artillery. You can see the gates have just gone down. But I think this is just a little bit more exciting. So we'll keep an eye on the fields out here. It's going to be very back and forth between the city because all it's going to come down to is whether or not these forces can break through this bridge and obviously make their way into the defenses right here and you know, kind of shore them up before the attackers can overwhelm them. Okay, and it looks like they are going double time. They want to try and get into this engagement as quickly as possible. Yeah, we're going to get a little bit tired. You can see that their vigor is already down to uh, active rather than fresh. So that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Again, as we look across the field itself, none of the siege towers, I think, have gone. And it does also seem like the defense is right here. The walls have been given up. So if I was this force of Burgundy, I would look to try and get these uh, these Pavese crossbowmen on the walls with the siege towers. Because you would just do so much damage. You got some culverines here as well. Loading up and just trying to break down some walls. I imagine they're going to try and make a breach or two in them walls. Just to avoid any of the, the real big you know, kind of like choke points that maybe Lorraine have set up. Yeah, they're going to try and take out this wall. Again, it's the, the, the Culverine, Culverine takes a bit of damage to take these. Okay, maybe not. I take that back. I was going to say, it takes a couple volleys, but there we go. One volley putting it to 68% is pretty goddamn crazy. You can see that the Swiss have called for reinforcements right here. Some of the, Lor the Lorrainian Ridder are going to be forming up. And all oh, these guys are great. I love the colorful Lancers. Very, very nice. And I love the, uh, yeah, the different colors of the overcoat for the horse as well. This is one of the really nice new units. I, I dig this a ton. So definitely hats off to Fox, who I think is playing in this battle, who created these guys. And obviously everyone else who helped him out there as well. Seems like the War Horses vote are on the move. Yeah, I would really think that now that this, yeah, look, as you can see, like these horses have been pretty segregated from the main army. If I was uh, the Swiss, maybe going in for this would be good because you kind of have the quality advantage. Like, granted, these guys are heavy shot cavalry. I mean, yeah, I guess these are a little bit more heavily armored. But, you you know, you just shovel your cavalry over to his flank and try and deal with this. Because a lot of the Burgundary force is just going to be holding up around this bridge, trying to push back anyone who is attacking. 
Have any of the siege towers decided to start moving yet? Not quite. Again, just the constant bombardment of the city is going to go out fast. I mean, do they need any more rams? I don't think they do, but I guess it's, uh, yeah, fine for now. I also really love the look of these guys as well right here. They look really, really nice. And also, we're going to be getting a little bit of uh, a little bit of choppiness here and there. I'm currently running this at, you know, 59 to 60 FPS, so the FPS should be all good. But the, the engine kind of struggles around 22,000 men on my computer. But I think that's plenty, and you know, it's understandable that something like that will happen. Does seem like though the cavalry is going to try and cut off any retreat here. I mean, this is not a bad idea. If you can keep this cavalry out here, it'd be a very, very effective way of pushing them back. And I think we're going to get the first volley going off right now as well. Also, sorry, I just think I need to turn up the sound a little bit on the effects. They just seem a little bit quiet. So let's turn them up just a little bit and maybe the music down just a tad. Because I can barely hear the troops speaking and stuff, which is... Yeah, we want to be able to hear the uh, the, the swords clashing and the, the arrows firing. Why the hell are these guys not firing? I guess they're waiting until they can see the whites of their eyes. And there we go, the first volley going out, letting them come in. But these big copper shields will be able to hold them out. And the front line is ready to fight. The Swiss are going to earn their gold in this battle as they go flying against the lines of Burgundy. More reinforcements. The crossbows are quickly reforming up. And this will be an interesting fight to see who does win this one. Because I think both sides have a very, very strong advantage. So yeah, I mean, but both of these units are very, very elite. So they're going to be fighting for a while. But as you can see, they've gone ahead and basically assaulted down the entire battle line. And something they could have done is they could have tried to just weaken these guys down. Like maybe not the Pavisa. Pavisa are going to hold for a long, long time. But something they definitely could have done is maybe try and focus down these swordsmen with the crossbows. But again, I think the crossbows are going to be trying to rattle in on any of the back line. Maybe even try and kill some of the uh, Burgundy Pavis. But again, you know, Pavis are hard to kill. It seems like they're putting in a lot of crossbow bolts in on these guys to break them through. And you can see, obviously, the allied lines as well. If we take a nice little zoom out picture, you can see the full-on lines. There's Lorraine are in the blue right here, and the Swiss are the yellow, because that's the player who sent it in. Cavalry are still backing off, but again, like, I really feel like they should try and take this cavalry fight. Even if they are a bit outnumbered, their infantry is just so close to reinforce. But I think it'd be a really, really good fight. Also, there's two medium cavalrymen here. But obviously, you know, keeping your cavalry safe is hella important. So they obviously just don't want to give that uh, advantage up. Also, guys, I apologize for how bright this battle is. Like, it's just really, really bright. And that's normally tends to be the fact when we've got snow. Hopefully, it'll come out pretty nicely. And I think my computer uh, is on a higher brightness than what I'm recording on, actually, as well. I actually can't believe how quickly this unit of Pavis Bowmen have gone down. I mean, they, obviously, they've got four units focusing one. But even still, I feel like Pavis tend to do a lot better at, like, just absorbing shots but i guess they've also lost a bunch over on the swiss side of things i mean the swiss aren't even proper pavise crossbows either they're just normal crossbowmen so yeah, the fact they've managed to do this great of an armor piercing is pretty impressive i think the city is still being bombarded as well uh, maybe not on this side but we do have a yeah heavy bombardment i guess the, the attackers are waiting for this artillery to break through before really making their move in these custom scenarios, there's probably uh, a few rules to kind of prevent this battle from being really one-sided. There we have it. One of the crossbows actually being caved in and routing from the battlefield. The sword fighting, though, is just, you know, back and forth. These heavily armored units are not going to go down easily. Again, I really love the look of these copper shields. It's, just, it's such a nice-looking unit for the Swiss. As you see the bolts going overhead, hitting one another. Also, guys, if you're looking for more people to play with on mods like this, like Rise of Mordor 1212, be sure to join my Discord. The link will be down below in the description. There's always guys looking for battles there. You know, all you have to do is quickly reply and say, hey, yeah, I'll play. What, what do you want to do? Get a jump in one of the, the Discord chats and you're away. Burgundy are not going down without a fight, though. These heavy armored infantry units are really effective. Yeah, I mean, look at that. They've only lost like 14 men. This one's lost 15. So just a really strong front line for both sides. 
The crossbows, though, are doing a great job at killing the PVs. I guess maybe they've made PVs a lot easier to kill than in this patch, because before, you'd normally have to waste your entire ammunition to, to really do anything. But it seems like if you focus down a unit right now, you, you're going to get them done. Oh, it does also seem like the Swiss Mercenary Company have arrived, and they're going to be putting down these pikes. It's going to be a great way to clear out such a defensive unit, because... Yeah, these, uh, these Pavis are going up against the really awesome looking Merchant Guard. Oh, wow. These guys are awesome. Really, really cool Mercenary Merchants. Like, I love the way that some have got bucklers. Some have got these kind of heart-shaped shields. Some are down to, like, kite shields. It's like a whole mix of, like, a Mercenary band, which is pretty cool. But, yeah, now that the Swiss Pikes have come up, that's going to be a great way to clear out this section of the battlefield. Because Pavis just take so long to kill. And obviously, time is of the essence. The quicker that Lorraine and the Swiss can break through this section of the assault, the better, really. Because I imagine the city assault will be starting any moment now. How much ammunition? Yeah, these guys have still got a little bit more ammunition left, but not really. What else are they trying to shoot at? I'm a little bit curious. Doesn't seem like anything quite yet. Yeah, I mean, I don't see why they're, they're not maybe assault. Oh, they're destroying the towers. Okay, now that the towers are done, yeah, you can see the siege towers are starting to move. I imagine the same will be over here again. That brightness is, you know, blinding. It's the snow, god damn it. Yeah, still no movement over on this left-hand side. The cavalry is still just fainting, but I love the way that the Swiss do have these heavy halberdiers kind of mixed in with their cavalry because they'll just do such a great job at helping to kill the heavy knights. It seems like Burgundy are starting to falter here a little bit, honestly. Their numbers are dropping. Whereas the Swiss's numbers are kind of staying pretty high. I think it is only going to be a matter of time until this is broken down. And there you go. The first break right there with the support of the Pikes. And that's going to open up a big gap. You can see Swordsman immediately going round. And it also is a really smart idea here by the Swiss player to throw forward his copper shields immediately. So that the gap stays open. And it's really up to Burgundy to commit this unit of Pikemen ASAP. Because... As you can see, this unit of mercenaries who are probably a little bit faster than your average infantry unit are immediately trying to go through that gap. Smart move here by the Burgundy player to kind of bring in this unit and you know kind of cover this. But again, it leaves this line really open. And if the Copper Shields wanted to, they could break through this really thin line because it is only a man deep. So all they'd have to do is pull through a little bit and they'd quickly envelop this unit that is really, really stretched right now. And as you can see, their morale is not great. However, the Copper Shield they're fighting also don't have great vigor either. They are exhausted already, which is never a good sign. And a nice little pike clash right here as well as the Swiss go up against the pikemen of Burgundy. I mean, we all know that the, the Swiss pikemen will probably definitely win this battle. Because I think, yeah, they have heavy pikemen, whereas these guys are just medium pikemen. So they're a bit more heavily armored. You can see they've kind of got like... I assume like a heavier outer coat of chainmail. And a big, big break in the center right now as more and more forces come forward. This is a perfect gap to come down. But it does seem like the Burgundy uh, army is actually going to be making its way around the side. And looking to hit these guys in the back. Try and break them. Yeah, because I mean they are exhausted. And that does play, end up playing a role very very quickly but it does also leave them pretty vulnerable to any cavalry charges that also decide to come in i mean it's kind of crazy to see Pavisman out flanking but it's definitely something they've decided and yeah again uh, this is a really good battle both players are testing each other you can see like as soon as i mention something the other player like quickly tries to counter it so here we go maybe this was a plan all along to try and encourage this cavalry fight because this cavalry is coming down as we do have some units of the dismounted cavaliers here but if I was this cavalry unit, I'd just smash into these dudes. But also charging heavy infantry. You know, these guys are charging. They're not braced. And the cavalry is just going to rip right through their formation. Yeah, and then trample on all of them as they get hit to the ground. I mean, yeah, these uh, dismounted chevaliers are just not good at bracing. And the cavalry is going to run straight forward. But the Duke's bodyguard, the Duke of Burgundy, is now having to go into the battle right now to try and keep this at bay. Man, what a good charge there by the cavalry. And then these cavalrymen are right here. Look at that. This unit lost half its strength right there. Just by trying to hold up against heavy cavalry fighting. 
Doesn't seem like the Swiss folk can break through this Burgundary battle line though. They're holding off fine, which is not good for defenders. Not good at all. It also seems like reinforcements are being sent over here. We've got the Culverine, I guess it has long range, is being brought over to maybe start bombarding this formation. I mean, yeah, that range is not great. <laughs> I don't really know what this Culverine is up to. But they're also putting some, uh, some spearmen here, I guess, to guard the waterways. I assume they weren't allowed to bring over any of their cavalry to help out. Because I guess that would really, really put the favour in the side of the uh, attackers. It's really weird because the attackers haven't actually decided to assault the city yet. I assume maybe they had to wait for a set amount of time to arrive or something. Or like, you know, there's there obviously some rule um, which was like, you have to wait this long before you can attack. There's also a, pr oh no, I was gonna say there's a pretty big gap here, but you just can't see the houses there from a distance. Yeah, I mean, there's a few gaps, and here we go. The cavalry engagement has finally gone off, and I, I think the Swiss just have this one. Their cavalry is heavier, and they have, I think, these uh, yeah, these heavy halberdiers in here as well, just to uh, you know, aid them and kill the enemy horses. But so the Burgundy, Burgundy have committed a, a big portion of these dismounted chevaliers, and with the support of them, we are going to kill these units and then charge forward onto the heavy halberdiers, who are going to be putting down their halberds and killing a few of these horses, but if the, the Burgundary Knights can make their way back round and then envelop this cavalry, it's going to be very useful. Renny II, I imagine the Duke of Burgundy, is going to be charging in, but going to be getting countercharged very effectively by the Burgundary uh, Duke of Burgundy. So you've got both generals fighting it off, and I think the Burgundary general did come out on top, especially as we have another general unit moving in and enveloping Renny II. He needs to be careful and needs some form of reinforcement, otherwise the, the Lorrainian Duke could be killed very, very quickly. There are more reinforcements being sent over, but I don't know if these guys will make it in time. This, this cavalry fight is going to last a while because just these guys are so heavily armoured. As well as that, the city siege has now begun as the forces are thrown forward. The crossbowmen are brought up. I guess they're going to start harassing these lines. But again, they're going to be shooting at Pavis mainly, probably. And the Pavis aren't going to take, like, any damage. I think they have close to 100% missile block. So, I mean, I think it'd be much, much better to get these crossbows on the, on the walls and then shoot directly down at these more kind of weaker targets. Are both sides moving? Yeah, every side is moving. And there we go, the Duke has been killed. I mean, yeah, it was a very, very hard, you know, position for him. The heavy billmen have uh, turned up now. The heavy pikemen have turned up, but it's a little bit too late now. We're going to quickly try and get involved in this battle somewhere. The crossbows are going out as well, killing a large amount of these general's bodyguards. If these crossbows can keep on shooting, they're going to kill this, this bodyguard very, very quickly. As well as that, the central battle line seems like it's kind of breaking. Even these crossbows are having to be thrown into the sword fighting right now to keep the, to keep the line steady. Oh, we have an... Is this a cavalry charge? Yeah, we do have a sally out over here. We're going to be charging into the infantry, and these guys are just so, like, unprotected right now. The cavalry is going to be doing a very great job at killing these guys. I mean, I don't think there's much cavalry yet because, oh, this is so bad. It seems like the cavalry has been brought over to the right-hand side and they really needed to be over here to prevent this from happening because the defenders are going to be getting some great cavalry charges. And most of the kills come from trampling with this cavalry charge. The cavalry charge will knock everyone to the ground. And then the horses, when they run away afterwards, will be the dudes getting all the kills because they'll trample on the dudes kind of stuck on the ground before they can get back up. Well, this is great by the defenders because it's buying their reinforcements time, right? It's buying them time. And you can see the generals are being brought back right here, you know? He's being thrown into tower range, but it's either tower range or crossbow range. And there's nowhere really for him to go. Whatsoever. As the infantry is breaking through on every corner now, yeah, the central battle line is completely broken. The Bavis are putting up a good fight, but they are struggling. More reinforcements being sent in. And even with the loss of the general, it seems like the quality 
of Lorraine and the Swiss are winning the day. Just committing cavalry after cavalryman with the help of the extra infantry is just proving too much for the forces of Burgundy. So it does mean we're going to have to, you know, kind of get a, a move on right now as these siege towers are going to be up the walls and, you know, pretty quickly they're going to be able to get crossbows on because the crossbows have such a good position right here because they can normally hit anything defending this choke point from this position. And, you know, what tends to happen is that these crossbows are like up here, so they can't quite clip these dudes. So it's a perfect position to have crossbows up here. It really, really is. We do have defenders, though, scattering around the wall. It seems like the crossbows are falling back. And the walls are getting, let me take them pretty undefended. Pretty interesting, but neither player is valuable, like, neither of the defending players are valuing these walls whatsoever. And I could come back to really hurt them if the crossbows can get up here. Do a little medieval two strategy, and it is deadly. We do see though that the second cavalry, the second uh, attacker with the siege equipment, has also brought over his cavalry now to reinforce this. I mean, it's not a bad trade, yet it does delay your forces. But just having soldiers here, you know, killing the enemy or cavalry oh, is going to be such a brutal charge. This line is way too thin in there. Counter charging, you need to be braced against these cavalry charges. You know, when you find out segregated units like this, uh, like left alone on the battlefield, not, not well supported, the cavalry is just going to, you know, run them down. There is nowhere for them to really run now, though. It's a pretty cool battle as well, right? Pretty cool goddamn battle. We zoom in like that. I mean, look at that. That's, uh, that's not bad, right? That is not bad. Especially if we get a nice, like, a nice little zoom in on one of these horsemen. As they fight bravely for honor and glory. So it looks like some infantry are actually routing from the field. More gates going down. Are we getting any infantry move through these breaches yet? No, just like what we do. We do have some crossbows brought up here. My crossbows, yeah, it seems like they've really reduced the shield defense of Pavis. Maybe they've just made the crossbows a lot more effective with heavy shot. I think this is kind of a nice little trade-off, though. Like, I like this. I like that we've done it. Beforehand, Pavis just seems to defend way too effectively. Like, granted, they should be super tanky. But it made crossbows just end up wasting their ammunition without really doing much. Like, what would end up happening is both sides would just waste their crossbow missile, like, killing each other's crossbows, and that would be it. We are also seeing a massive breakout here. Wow. This is not looking good for Burgundy. You can already see the balance of power starting to shift. And now they can start moving in the rest of their forces. Yeah, one of the enemy generals is dead probably out here. Yeah, out here. The crossbows are moving in. Now, the one thing that the attackers do have going for them is that the reinforcements have no missiles. Like, they have a couple shots here and there. Nothing great. And I think with his last breath, the, uh, the Duke's bodyguard is going to charge into these crossbows just to kill as many as possible. Bit of friendly fire going off as well between the Swiss. The Swiss just see horsemen and they want to try and take them down. I mean, look at that battlefield, man. That is, uh, that is something, as you just see the Swiss marching forward. Very, very cool stuff, man. I love 12-12. This -12. is such a great atmosphere of a game. These crossbows are being brought up. But yeah, if you get these guns on the walls... Oh my god, the handgunners will just shred for anything. And all of Lorraine's cavalry has been killed. So, I mean, that tactic worked, right? It was a delay tactic. It was mainly here just to slot the attackers so their reinforcements could get in. But now they've broken through this. Lorraine's lost all their cavalry inside the city. The walls are being taken. Crossbows are being brought up onto the walls. You can see right here. The crossbows are going to be making their way up on these walls very, very soon. Seems like they're a little glitched out, but I'm sure they'll sort themselves out soon. Hopefully this isn't going to be a major problem. Yeah, there you go. They're now moving upside into the walls. So the crossbow is going to get up here and basically harass all of these guys. However, it does seem like the Lorraineian forces are not going to be stupid. They're also going to be putting their crossbows to basically harass them as soon as they get up here. Because not only does it give, like, the attackers a great vision, you're also putting undefended units up here. Like, both sides can shoot directly at the opponent. So, you know, these guys are going to be doing just as much damage. Because it's not like there's any defenses like on the back of this wall. You know, like covering the rear whatsoever. I mean, there probably would be something here like realistically, but right now there is not. 
this cannon as well still somehow managed to get a shot off. As you can see there, a lot of these crossbows are already dying, so maybe it would have been a better idea to try and clear these guys out, but I imagine it's going to be very hard to do so. They even got some swordsmen up on these for these crossbows. Yeah, wow. The attackers are being a bit too gun ho right now. They need to set up their defense, but they, they are fighting against the clock. With them reinforcements making their way in. Along the bridge any seconds now. And when they, when they arrive, I think there is just no hope for the attackers whatsoever. I mean, it's already looking pretty bleak, but they are going to be bravely charging in. Just the quality of the Swiss really paying dividends in this battle. Really, really paying dividends. And again, if we take a look at the overall battlefield, we can see, you know, they're making good, pro you know, good progress right here. But look at all these units right there. There's still so many. You know, they're, they're depleted, but there's a lot of heavy units in the Lorraine army. The Swiss have paid with their lives for sure. I think the Swiss have taken the biggest pounding. They're just going to you know, reform up into marching column and then make their way inside the city. Also means that these units can also move elsewhere. Again, if we take a look at here, you can see the crossbows are scattering the walls. But even right here, you know, they've got three units against one and the crossbows coming in. Just killing them bit by bit. Take a look at the numbers. Yeah, oh my god, that's been a slaughter. I can't believe that. Just how quickly that flipped. The attack is only a 4,000 men. I imagine the defenders have similar amounts of men inside the walls. And then you, you know, obviously include the 4,000 reinforcements that are yet to arrive. I and mean, that's looking very, very scary. You still have plenty of men trying to filter in. Getting their pikemen over the walls. I mean, they're doing a good job here, but they are fighting some heavy Lorrainian knights. Dismounted knights with, you know, war axes and hammers. They're perfect equipment to really deal with Pavis, which is such a heavily armoured unit. You got some cavalry moving through the city as well. God, they still have horse left. Oh my god. The Waffen Connect. Uh, yeah, I think I pronounced that perfectly. And here we go. Look how awesome this is. They're like, yeah, whatever. We got some time to waste. We'll march in when we want to march in. You know? Reform the line. That's what I love to see. You got pikemen formed up. This is beautiful. Cavalry in the back. The Swiss are reforming up as well. What's left of the Swiss? Definitely a legendary unit. And the crossbows have just been so ineffective. They've really been hammered up on the walls. I guess they really needed to make a breach on this side. Because, yeah, I guess I eat, like putting your crossbows on the walls is great. But it seems like they are really, really struggling. And there's even some culverines set up here as well, which is just, you know, perfectly. I mean, they're, they're facing down, which probably isn't the best. But these ones are a bit more effective. Again, just focusing. I mean, destroying your own walls is also a valid strategy as well. But yeah, the crossbows are breaking, and I think that's going to be all she wrote. I mean, still, we're going to still stick around with this battle, but because this force is doing a pretty good job on the right-hand side. Yeah, nice outflank right here, moving the heavy knights around the back of the Pavis. Pretty good job. And the crossbows here yeah, on this side are having a much greater effect. Look at that. They've decimated these dudes down here. Your gunners up here as well. Don't know if the gunners can shoot over the top. If they can, again, they're going to be doing a pretty nice job. There is some artillery over here, though. The artillery is coming in. Trying to breach this line as the Testudo holds firm. More reinforcements are just walking inside of the city, but I think these guys should maybe turn around and flee because all hopes does seem lost. Oh, a, a pretty nice artillery shot there by the catapults, getting a couple horses here and there. Are they marching yet? No, they're still not marching. Who are they waiting for to reform? Love the Swiss line right here as well. Very, very cool stuff. Yeah, they're still not marching in. Maybe they just don't even need to. The defenders have also boxed these pavis into a corner. There is no escape for them whatsoever. Flee for your lives, boys. Flee for your lives. Crossbows continue to go in and just pepper the walls.
The poor men of Burgundy. I guess they, they, there was just no messenger coming saying what they lost, so they assumed they won the battle out there. Otherwise, I doubt these Burgundy units would be so gung-ho. They needed to take the city before this, uh, this battle happened, and they, they really, really struggled to do so. They, they spent way too much time on the bombardment phase. The rain are already, already starting to put some men back on the walls now to push Burgundy back. And these crossbows are still up, but I think they have to wait for everyone to get on the wall before they can start firing a volley, which is, you know, allowing the rain just to get two, three, four bolts off before the Pavese crossbows of Burgundy even get one. But again, it's not like they're not making any progress. Over this side of the city, they're doing a great job. You know, they're going to break through this entire side, allowing them to then reinforce and kind of cut off this. But you can also see that's why Lorraine are committing more and more men over to this part of the battlefield. Yeah, we do have some pikemen here, just finishing off these heavy swords. And then they're going to obviously move on forward to fight these sergeants as well. Crossbows coming in. They're also deciding to put the guns on the walls. The guns on the walls is probably a pretty good idea. And the cavalry is flooding into the city now as well. I guess they, would, they really want to try and get into this big open gap right here. Oh yeah, there's also swordsmen up here. Wouldn't it be a bad idea, honestly, to throw these dismounted swords down so that when you finally break through this section, you can then envelop them? Because I mean, there is a pretty big gap right there. But they could walk their way through if they wanted to. You can see these routing men are seizing that opportunity. Maybe the cavalry is just going to charge in to try and break through. I mean, these, these dudes are braced, but they're, they're only four ranks deep, so... Yeah, they kind of see... They, they held in the center, but where their lines are a lot, little bit less deep, the knights did break through. And I mean, these aren't late troops as well. We all, these are late troops. These aren't high period units, which are the 16th century. Which are like the best ones. So they're probably going to have some success here as they continue to break through. Oh, and here we go. Victorious men are on the move. I mean, just look at this, man. They're like rallying. They know they've done a good job. Just so many men are pouring into the city. As they cheer, this is awesome. It's so cool that they're cheering. They know that victory is at hand. And they're saying cheer, you misery lot. They're coming into the city victorious. And you cannot fault that. Wow. The Swiss definitely earned their gold this day. Very, very impressive stuff. And now I think it is only a matter of time until the attackers are completely done for. Their cavalry have broken through, so this was a nice move by Burgundy, kind of like a last-ditch effort. They managed to get their cavalry outside of the city, or inside the city, but through the ranks. I imagine using this line, but, you know, so quickly, the rain have quickly moved in. Artillery shots, though. Oh, they get a nice hit on... Oh, I just kind of skirt. That was a good hit, but it could have been much, much better. Now, if they could have just, you know, got one direct hit in the central line here, my God, that would have been absolutely epic. Let's see if the next shot is going to find its target. There's crossbows going in as well. The artillery does seem to be finding its mark bit by bit. The pikes are pushing them back. I just want to see like a direct missile here. I think it'd be so nice. Is there any more ammunition left? Yeah, but they're still shooting. Up. Oh, I got one more shot left on them. It is only one artillery. Oh, it's two. It's two. Are we gonna follow it in? Maybe it can't even shoot. But yeah, that's gonna be pretty much all she wrote for the battle, especially because <laughs> it's so funny that these guys are just marching inside of the city. So I skipped ahead just to clear out, you know, it was pretty obvious what the outcome of this battle was gonna be. Burgundy did put up a pretty good fight. However, 
They couldn't break through any of the defense. They definitely got a few more kills towards the end, but as you can see, the Swiss are now just making their way into the city center to claim victory, and that was the battle. Definitely a massive GG to both, uh, all eight players, because that was definitely one epic showdown for sure. Um, and it was really cool seeing the reinforcements come in and try their best. Let's take a look at the kills themselves. I want to see who really racked up the most kills. So let's start off with the Swiss mercenaries. We can see that the men at arms, over 200 kills, is pretty impressive. And the crossbows doing a very, very nice job. The copper shields doing okay, definitely holding the line. Yeah, but the crossbows were just, yeah, out of this world. Over on one of the Lorraineian forces, we can see that they're, again, their crossbows doing really good. And the knights, pretty impressive. Um, over on this side, I really love these uh, units right here. They were very, very cool to see. Um, and the pikemen, a nice job right there. Then the final Lorraineian force, again, their cavalry and crossbows. I think that's what we're going to see across the board, right? It's just cavalry and crossbows, cavalry and crossbows. So if you guys enjoyed this battle, be sure to drop a like and a comment down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.